the special favor of Allah. The universe is the body and its soul. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحبك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحبك يا نور الله ما شاء الله viewers of Madrid channel welcome to this New series of programs, it's our second episode of Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. And in this series of programs, hopefully we're going to learn from the lessons of the past. We're going to learn from yesterday, make a change today so we can have a better tomorrow. But before we begin, we're going to give you a blessing of reciting Durud Park upon the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we'll start with the topic. The blessing of Durud Park that I've decided to share with you today is that it is narrated that Sayyidina Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala has stated, that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that he who reads a single Durud Park, now sometimes when you listen to Madhuri channel, we'll give you a wazifa that said, read it 300 times, read it 1000 times, read it this many times. This one, how much easier can it get? Read it once, read it once. And if you read Durud Park with me at the beginning, then you've read it four times already. But the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he who reads a single Durud Park upon me, Allah azza wa jal, blesses him 10 times, 10 sins of his forgiven, and he has increased 10 times in his status. Allah Akbar. So please views him on the channel. Make a habit of reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa Who knows that one extra through the park that you recite today might make all the difference on the day of judgment. Views him on the channel. With regards to the topic of today, today we're going to talk about Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Ramatullah. We're going to learn a little bit about his life. And we're going to learn about his teachings, his yearning for knowledge, his love of the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa His love of the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. But today, in particular, we want to talk about his yearning for knowledge, his thirst for knowledge. Because a thirst for knowledge is something that if you can understand the importance of knowledge, if you can develop that thirst inside you. Nowadays, people have thirst, they have thirst for money, they have thirst for status, and they want to get more and more and more of this. If we can develop, if we can somehow develop that thirst for knowledge inside ourselves, then inshallah, Azawajal, by acquiring this knowledge, acting upon this knowledge, passing on this knowledge of the deen, and this is what I mentioned, not the, not the knowledge of other things, the knowledge of the deen. If we can get that thirst of the knowledge of the deen, inshallah, Azawajal, then it will benefit both in this world and in the hereafter as well. But before we actually talk a little bit about Sayyidi Allah, Hazrat Ramatullah Ta'ala's thirst for knowledge, his yearning for knowledge, I think we need to mention who is this personality. Because... You know, maybe a lot of the viewers that are watching uh, this program, they will know who Allah Hazrat is. But then there will be a lot of people out there that they've heard Allah Hazrat mentioned. They may have heard Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Ramatullah Ta'ala mentioned. They've heard this name mentioned many, many times. But who is he? It's someone that we've, we've heard mentioned on Jummah Salah. The Imam Sahib mentions it. Or maybe we've heard his name mentioned in the speech somewhere. But we really don't know anything about this person. So I want to really basically introduce this person and so that we know a little bit about him. Which is again something that I want to try and emphasis on this program yesterday, today and tomorrow to find out who these people were. Who were these people of the past? Who were these great personalities of the past? Who were these role models that were there that came before us? The sacrifices that they made and because of them, the deen has come to us today. And if it was not for their sacrifices, I surely would probably not be sitting here today. With regards to Allah Hadrat, leader of the Ali Sunnah, Mulana Shah Imam Muhammad Raza Khan, he was born on Saturday, the 10th of Shawwal. When it comes to the Hijri year, he was born in 1272 Al-Hijri. Now this corresponds to the 14th of June, 1856. And he was born at the time of Zor in Jasuli, which is one of the areas of the Blessed Braili Sharif in India. Allah Hazrat himself, Ramadullah Ta'ala, he belonged to a Pathan family. You know, so most his family must have migrated from the, the Pathan area, maybe from Afghanistan or that side, somewhere in the history. He belonged to that Pathan family, and he, had, he was from the Hanfi school of thought, Qadri from Tariqa and Braili due to the place that he was born. His father's name was Mulana Nakhi Ali Khan, and his grandfather's name was Mulana Raza Ali Khan. 
And as we mentioned, we mentioned that they, we put the title there of Mulana. From that you can gather that he came from a very pious background. Not only his father, but his grandfather were very, very pious as well. His birth name is Muhammad. His respectable mother used to call him Aman Mia. And his father and other relatives used to call him Ahmad Mia. And his grandfather named him Ahmad Raza. And his historical name is Al Mukhtar. Allah Hazrat himself used to write Abdul Mustafa before his name. So this is a little bit about who he was and where he was born. And I think if we can learn, and there's so much we can talk about, you know, his, his childhood, how he was brought up, how he acquired the knowledge of the deen and the yearning of the knowledge. But I want to today really talk about specific areas so you'll understand the qualities that he had, that he was able to grasp knowledge so quickly. And this was only a God-given, only, only God can be, give these sort of qualities. You know, certain things you can, you know, you're born with. They say that certain people are born with certain qualities and certain people have to train themselves. This quality of acquiring the knowledge, this thirst that he had inside him, this ability to be able to read books and understand them almost instantly was amazing. With that in mind, there was an incident that took place. It is stated that the Khalif of Allah Hazrat, Alama Maulana Mufti Zafruddin Bihari, Ramutullah, that is mentioned, the Allah Hazrat was staying in the house of Wasi Hamid, Muhaddis Surti, Ramutullah, as a guest in Pilhibit in India. One day during a conversation, a book of fiqh was mentioned, which was kept in the library of Muhaddis Surti. Having heard the name of the book, Allah Hazrat Ramutullah said that I've not seen this book. Can you lend me this book? And when I go back to Bravely Shri, so, so lend me this book when I go back to Bravely Shri. Muhaddis Surti, Ramutullah, happily he accepted it and he brought the book and he presented it to Allah Hazrat saying this. Please return this when you have studied this, because you have many books, but I only have a few books through which I'll give fatwa, and this is one of them. So Allah Hazrat had loads of books. So this person said to him, look, I'm giving you this book. Read it, by all means read it, study it, but please give it back to me. I don't have many books. You have a lot of books, and I need this book for my reference. Allah Hazrat accepted that book. On the same day, he had to leave for Brailvishri, but due to the invitation of a devoted disciple, he had to stay one more day. Allah has stood that book during the night, and the next day when it was time to lay for Braille Vishi, he returned the book to Muhaddis Surti and said, I intended to take it to Braille, and if I had left it yesterday, I would have taken it. But since I have, did not leave yesterday, I read the whole book during the night and in the morning, and now I do not need to take it. Being extremely surprised, Muhaddis Surti Ramatullah said, was it sufficient to read it only once? Because normally when you're studying a book, views of Mishan, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll study a certain book. And certain books you can pick up, and I've had this experience, there's certain books I can pick up and I can read 20, 30, 40 pages. And I've got the, you know, you understand what's, what's happening there and you've understood what's going on. But certain books, certain thick books, certain, you know, strong books, when you pick up the book, you end up reading half the page and you think, oh, hold on a minute, read it again, read it again, read it again. And, you know, you have to probably read certain, certain things, you have to read five or six times to fully grasp an understanding of it. So Muhaddis Surti said to him that, you know, you've only read it one time, is that enough? Because obviously you're going to utilize this book, you're going to utilize it going forward, you're going to reference this book. Is it enough for you to read it once? And Allah Hazrat said that by the grace and mercy of Allah Hazrat, I hope that I'll write in the fatwa the sentence which I need for two or three months and the topic has been saved for the rest of the, my life. That I'll be able to reference this book, I can remember everything that's in this book and I'll write fatwas related on this book and the references will stay in my, in my memory for the rest of my life. This, this quality of you as a military channel, he had so much passion for yearning that, you know, sometimes, you know, many of us, we acquire books. I remember here in UK that for many, many years, there were not many books available in the English language. And Alhamdulillah, when Dawud Islami started to translate the booklets of Emile Sunnah, all of a sudden we were so excited. And as soon as they came, we started buying them. But then what happened is, is we were buying them, but then what we started to see is that people were buying them, but not reading them. And people started to put them on the shelves, you know, so that, that we've got the full collection, we've got all the books there. So it's one thing buying books. I remember there was one book that I remember was released. And I remember speaking to some brothers later on, and I said, look, you know, I, I, I read it. It took me a couple of months to read that book, and I finally completed that book. Have you read it? And they said, no, we read the first 10 pages, or oh, we read the first 15 pages, we read the first 20 pages. But this is again is what happens with Ismita, that when books come to us, they should not be decoration pieces. And unfortunately, a lot of the books in our houses now, they become decoration pieces. They're there on the shelf, they look good. And you know what we try to do is we try to buy, you know when there's multi-volume books? When there's a book that's eight volumes or ten volumes, we'll buy that one that 
looks nice from the outside. So the title is written in Arabic and it's written over the 10 volumes and it completed over that. It was really nice on the shelf. So it becomes a beautiful decoration piece. Now that's all well and good. There's nothing wrong in that. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying don't buy that book that looks good on your shelf. But in the same way, viewers of Mattel, what looks good on your shelf is better if you acquire the knowledge from it. Otherwise, what is that book on the shelf? What is that book on the shelf if you're not utilizing that book? What is the book on the shelf if you're not benefiting from that book, if you're not reading from that book? And so we need to make a, a, a passion within ourselves that, yes, buy books. And Allah Azza wa Jalla has blessed us that we are able to buy books. And Allah Azza wa Jalla has given us the technology nowadays where we can download books completely free of charge. You know, on I have a PC tablet here. I have probably, I don't know, maybe close to 300 books plus on here. 300 books plus, you know, and there's people that have got thousands of books downloaded. And they, read, and they go through them and read them. And what I do is, is I either download them, as and when I've read them, I mark them as finished, so I know that I've completed that book, and it becomes in a finished file. So I can see the ones that I've not read, and I try to read them one by one and complete them. But it's, it's no good having 2,000 books on your PC tablet and say, oh, I've got so much memory on my PC tablet, I've been able to download 2,000 books, but you don't read them. So have the books, but make sure you read them, make sure you utilize them, make sure that you benefit from them, and try and share that knowledge with others as well. And we can see from that story that I mentioned, that Allah has had so much passion and yearning for acquiring an Islamic knowledge, that a bush which normally takes a long time, if it is studied with understanding, but may I be sacrificed on the yearning of Allah, that he did not only read the book in one night from beginning to end, but he also memorized it in such a way that he said, that if I have to write fatwas from it, I'll be able to write the references and the page number for the rest of my life. Now, nowadays, if I was to say to you, okay, what books have you read? What Islamic books have you read? Okay, you read that. Okay. What was in that book? And maybe you remember a, a, an incident that took place in the bus. Maybe you remember hadith that was in that book. Maybe you remember a parable that was in that book, a story that was in that book, an event that was in that book. Okay, fair enough. Mashallah, very good. Give me the page number. Give me the page number where you read that book. Allahu Akbar. Now it would be difficult. And from this you understand now, viewers and that Allah Hazrat, he had this great passion that he didn't just read the book for the sake of reading. He read it, understood it, and memorized it. And okay, Allah Hazrat had this unique quality that he would read a book, memorize it, and he could do it in one night. Okay, we, we cannot achieve that status. Well, the majority of us, probably nearly all of us cannot. But at least when we read a book, read it in such a state that if, if, it, if Allah Hazrat takes one day to read it, okay, we take one year to read it. But we read it in such a state that we remember it. We can take references from it. We can benefit from it as well. We're going to take a small break now. Inshallah. We're going to go to a kalam of the day. Inshallah. When we come back, hopefully we're going to have a guest online as well. But we're going to continue with this vast topic. Let's go to the kalam of the day. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqa. 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 वो कौन है जिनके दर पर मांगने वाला नहीं नहीं सुनता वो कौन है जिनकी रहमत का दरिया खुद प्यासों को तलाश करता है वो कौन है जिनके इशारे से लाखों की शफात हो जाएगी वो कौन है जो महशर के दिन अपने गुलामों को अपने हाथों से जाम कौसर अदा फरमाए यकीन कोई और नहीं जूदो करम वाले सखावत वाले रहमत वाले रब के हबीब हमारे आका है वाह क्या जूदो करम है शहबत तेरा नहीं सुन साही नहीं मांगने वाला Okay, 
वो है कतरा तेरा तारे खिलते हैं सखा के वो है जर्रा तेरा तारे खिलते हैं सखा के वो है जर्रा
صاحب خان لقب کس کا ہے تیرا تیرا صاحب خان لقب کس کا ہے تیرا تیرا واہ کیا جو دو کرم ہے شہبت ہا تیرا میں ہی سنسا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا سے سو لاکھ کو کافی ہے اشارہ تیرا واہ کیا جو دو کرم ہے شہبت ہا تیرا میں ہی سنسا ہی نہیں جس دن چھوکو ملے جام چھلکتا تیرا جس دن چھوکو ملے جام چھلکتا تیرا واہ کیا جو دو کرم ہے شہبت ہا تیرا میں ہی سنسا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا تیری سرکار میں لاتا ہے رضا اس کو شفی جو میرا غوث ہے اور لادلا بیٹا تیرا جو میرا غوث ہے اور لادلا بیٹا تیرا واہ کیا جو تیرا میں ہی سنسا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا واہ کیا جو دو کرم ہے شہبت ہا تیرا سنسا ہی نہیں مانگنے والا تیرا صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ اکبر ویورز امیر شاہ ویہر بیوٹیفل کلام دے اور ایک ہوپ کہ آپ نے اسے بہت سے 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 بہت س
faith in lightning kalam actually, if we can understand it. And I can, my Urdu is a little bit weak. I can't fully understand and comprehend it. But what I can understand, inshallah, it benefits me. But I have online, I have online, inshallah, as a deliver, someone that fully understands it, mashallah, because he is a Madri. He's a graduate from our Jamadur Madina and he's mashallah a Mubalik and a presenter on Madani channel. Shabazz bhai, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You did mention firstly that I've got a guest who does understand it. Now, in terms of the kalams of Allah Hazrat and my understanding, I can comfortably say without exaggeration, I probably understand 1%. Allah, Allah, Allah. Now, Allah. while studying, I did enjoy reading the Kalams of Allah Hazrat. Mm. There was a there was a time that I had no interest, to be honest. I had no interest in Kalams when I was when I was new. And then I saw some students, and there used to be a little booklet. I don't have one no more. But Allah Hazrat is Hadaki Bakshish. It was published in a little booklet, and a few people have gifted me these. A few people have there. They were all possibly used ones or some places they were raped. So in a way, I would take it, take it off them because I used to enjoy it. And then I remember before Jamaat time, I would go early and I would all take out the booklet from my pocket and I would read the Kalams of Allah Hazrat, try to memorize some of them. Um, I don't know how much I'd, I remember at this moment. But nevertheless, I was a side but I had a question for you. Somebody so asked ahead. me that the name of the program is Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. Yes, in yes. fact, they didn't even say the name of the program. They said, it says yesterday, today and tomorrow. What's that? We had this idea that, al Alhamdulillah, on Madani channel, we're always talking about yesterday. We're always talking about things that have happened in the past. We're talking about parables, hadiths, events that took place. But the thing is, what I wanted to emphasize is that what we have picked up from the yesterday, how do we utilize it today to make a better tomorrow? What lessons are we learning? So it could really, I mean, we debated this. Should we call it the past, present and the future? Or should we call it yesterday, today, and tomorrow? And we went for yesterday and today and tomorrow. So, and, and the other the other reason for choosing this was to create a little bit of confusion. So that people think, what is that? Exactly what you said, what is that? So if people will watch it and find out what is that. The basic idea is that we want to learn from yesterday, to make a change today, to have a better tomorrow. Mashallah, well, beautiful, but strange at the same time. Strange things good, are good. beautiful too. People search for strange things and want to look at strange things to find out actually what's going on. So I'm hoping people tune in and see what is this strange program that's on TV. Today we specifically now are starting to talk about Allah Hadith. And basically we've just introduced him. And we've only mentioned, I've only mentioned one event that took place, uh, Shabazz Bhai, that when Allah Hadith went and he traveled and he picked up the book of fiqh from Muhaddisi Surti Ramadullah and he learned the book of Bayat in one whole night. You know this topic, Khalib, I think is a little bit difficult. Me, myself, I was just thinking, I was just for a moment when I found out what the topic was, I think it's a bit difficult because when we think of Allah Hazrat, automatically you think of knowledge. Yeah. Automatically you think of Fatawa Ridwiya Sharif, you know, which is 30 or so volumes. So automatically you think a thousand books. You know, not many people have written. We hear about the great Hazrat Imam Jalaluddin Asiyyuti Shafi'i Rudrahu written a thousand works. It's not something we hear very often. So we think of knowledge, we think of his books. So we can easily speak about his books. We can easily speak about his the knowledge he has. But the yearning and his seeking the knowledge, this I was thinking is a bit difficult, Khalid Bhai. Just one point I would like to mention that we've heard of geniuses. In the Western world is geniuses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants everybody some sort of strength. Everybody, nobody should ever think, I have no strength, there's nothing I'm good at. No, no, you are good at something. Everybody must understand this. There is something you are good at, no doubt. Now, some people possess a greater strength in one aspect and a weakness in another. I remember a very, very long time ago, reading about one person who he's able to take a look at a page I'm not, I'm not speaking about our Islamic scholars. We had the great Imam Shafi'i when he would look at a page, he would have to cover one page. Why? In Allah order, Allah. because as soon as he would look at it, he would retain it to memory. He would Allah memorize Allah. it. So only then would he look at the second page. So we've had people like this in the Islamic world, but I'm speaking about normal people. So, you know, I've heard about one person who, you know, as a very, very young child, before he could talk, he was somehow able to read. And this person, he's very, very intelligent. Everything he's read, you know, 99%, 90%, 
he retains, he remembers, he's able to also mention these things, state these things. So then a person will think, wow, really? You know, this is, is this true? And yes, it is true. That is possible. So we will all, be, we will also find that there is some sort of deficiency this person has, whether it be in his socializing, whether it be in another matter, there will be some sort of weakness. What we must understand is Allah has it, we're not going to say, and it is true, yes, he did strive for knowledge, no doubt about it. But there's something we must understand that some people, they are born Walids. Ghosipak, Fadilahu ta'ala anhu, the great beer of all beers. Ghosipak, he was born a Wali. Undoubtedly, every companion and all the old, yeah, Allah, not every one of them, but many of them, they are born a Wali. And they are given strengths and extra strengths in particular fields, but they don't have the weaknesses. This is what we Allah. must understand. Allah. So Allah has that he possesses all those strengths which we hear. Wow, this person is a masterman, this person, you know, we hear the word polymath where Allah has just the other day, no, not the other day, not very long ago, I was speaking to my teacher. He's my teacher, he looks up on me, um, you know, what have you been reading? I hope you've been making the most of your time. And subhanAllah, generally we were having a conversation and generally what I've been reading these is the history of, for example, Aqeedah. So this generally is, you know, one of the books I was reading or quite a few. And I was telling us also that these are the things I was reading. But we were talking about general scholars. We were just naming different scholars. This scollar, this that scholar from Imam Azam, his students, etc, etc. And honestly, we were not talking about Allah Hazrat or anything. It was just generally we were speaking about earliest scholars. Allah Hazrat Anhu was just over a century ago. And at the end of it, I just thought that I was. I was just saying to the Sasa that Sasa, that we hear of all these scholars. We hear of so many, but his one just his next level. I did it, honestly, at the end, this is what I said. I said, look. So as we hear of this person, he's, you know, with big names, very big names, that many people would have heard of, where they are masters in this science, they are masters in that. And I said, Sasa, but Allah has its next level. Uh, Khalid, but I'll say you do, will not understand this. To a level, I will not understand this. Mm-hmm. Although I wow. did done, I think this, I've heard it so many times, but Allah has it on another level. This is what I say, mm-hmm. and I think I understand. But, a person can truly only understand another person when he, for example, a lawyer can only truly identify whether another lawyer is a good one or is not a good one. A doctor, only a doctor can tell you this person is a good doctor or is not a doctor. You don't know nothing about it. And the more you learn, you just think and you just amaze. Allah has just, wow. Really, that's just all that comes to you. Wow. And subhanAllah, in terms of his learning, when Allah Hazrat was at the age of four, Allah Hazrat had recited the Quran. This lesson for us. There are wow. many lessons, but this could some, some, some people could take it wrongly, Khalidai. Some people could think, oh my child is four, he's just started, he needs to finish it quickly. Otherwise it's not it's, it's not good. So no, don't take that lesson. That, that's a wrong lesson. You can't compare your child to no, this no. mastermind. No, no. But the lesson we can take from this is that this individual was no ordinary child. He was mature. Now, Khalid Bai people were a lot more mature in the previous ages. Sometimes we think our children are too young. We need to treat them. We need to treat them like mature people. And inshallah, they will show that maturity. We need to, you know, give them that, let them experiment, as they say, when they're young, rather than forbidding them from doing this. No, 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 be careful. Doctors that you're going to dirty it. Don't do this. Don't. You know, we need to teach our children, and the best teaching is experience, or the best learning is through experience. You know, you mentioned that Allah Hazrat that at a young age he learned the Quran. At a young age he acquired the knowledge of the Deen. You know, like uh, a young child doesn't just wake up one morning and think, you know what, I want to, I want to read the Quran now, and I'll go to the madrasa and I'll complete the Quran. It's the the household as well, though the the tarbiyat, and and you know, we touched a little bit upon that at the beginning that. You know, the household that Allah has been brought up in, that again has a significant part to play. And you're talking about lessons. This is again a lesson there from us that what was the household that he was brought up in? Khalid Bhai, you know, a person, 
when he's going to study, for example, you know, you may have a child and you send that child to go study. Where did you send them? You send your children to a school or you send your children to a madrasa, obviously. His father, he himself taught his own child initially. Allah Hazrat also saw Al Madin later, but he himself taught his own child. And his own father had taught him 21 disciplines, 21 sciences he had mastered. I think that again needs to be emphasized, uh, Shabazz, by that mastered is one thing because. You know, I can say that I have knowledge of a lot of sciences, I have knowledge of different areas, but mastering them is a different thing. I probably mastered none of them. He also studied under his both his father and his grandfather. His grandfather passed away when he was around about 10 years of age. But at a very, very young age, he had mastered 21 disciplines. This is not something minor, is it? It's something which is, you know, which is great. But Khalid, I think the lesson to take from this is for parents, so that you, you could give us a lesson. Allah Hazrat, he was unique. Allah Hazrat was a mastermind. Allah Hazrat was, had the capability of mastering these sciences in a short space of time. But at the same time, he still needed that environment. Yeah, he, he didn't just, like I said, he didn't do it on his own. He needed that environment. And he, like you said, rightly said, he learned from his father. He learned from his grandfather. He learned from someone. Yeah? Now, who is the someone when it comes to our children? Who is there to teach our children? And, and you've rightly pointed towards that. That is our responsibility. But I think, Shabazz, but the problem is nowadays is that you know, we have very little knowledge. We have very little knowledge. And because we have very little knowledge, we don't have much knowledge to pass on. And so, unfortunately, we're now reliant. We're reliant more on our madrasas. We're reliant more on these places, which again, you know, you send the children to a madrasa for one and a half hours. And the majority of the time, you don't send them because you don't think it's very important. And they, they'll take holidays off, they'll miss days off, and it's not a concern to you. And then you wonder why our children, you know, aren't following, you know, the Quran and Sunnah, why they aren't growing up as pious children, because we've not given them that time. And that's something that, as parents, we need to realize that uh, we cannot just pass the book on to Ustad Sahib. I didn't want to get into this, but what's happening is, do you know that space of masjid now? Well, like generally, I remember when I was young too, it would be after school masjid every day, weekdays. But now people want to bring in other things. I want my child to go swimming. I want them to have after school classes yes. and the time well, what will that take up that will take the master time yes. so now from going for to five days they're breaking it down yeah they'll go and read the quran once or twice a week so even in five days i've now gone to one or two days we've had it now that we've we've, we've got a huge demand uh shabazz by for weekend madrasa and basically uh weekend madrasas where they only go one day a week and we've just started one now online. We've got nearly 900 applicants for our Fazan weekend school because people only, you know, at that limited time. So we're saying, okay, you know, you should be giving more time. But all right, if you only want your children to be with, with us for two hours a week, then we'll take that as well. And there's a great demand there out there. I mean, we opened up the gates for this and we've got 900 applicants, Shabazz, right? Just for a weekend uh, Islamic school, basically a weekend madrasa, one day a week. People don't want to do that. And, and you know, you, you were brought up in a place where the madrasas were five times a week. You go around the country, Shabazz, but there are many, many places where you say, oh, it's come down to three times, it's come down to two times. Many, many places don't even have it during the week. It's just Saturday morning for two hours or Sunday morning for two hours. And that's it, done and dusted. If we don't have that knowledge base there, if we don't learn from like the people of the past and, and start to acquire this knowledge, then what, what are our future generations going to be like? Like you said, you were brought up with it's five times a day, five days a week madrasa. I was brought up with that. We used to go to the madrasa you know, no matter what the weather was, get out of the house and go to the madrasa. Nowadays, you said it's come down to three, it's going down to two, it's going down to one. If we continue on this path today, like we said early on, if we continue on this path today, what's tomorrow going to be like? I hope that may Allah Ta'ala make it easier for us. Khalid Bhai, do you know in terms of the madrasa, you've mentioned that, Masha, there's so much demand. There's, is it just demand or have we made the demand? What would you say? I think that the thing is, is that, that people... It, there is people that haven't want that that yet, yeah. and there, I think there is a demand there. There is a need for that because people you don't want to send the children five days a week because they think, oh, it's too much. You know, our children are at the school for six hours a day. They can't go to the madrasa every day for one and a half hours. And so, yes, they need to go swimming. They need to go cycling. They need to go play football. They need to pay on the you know PC games and everything. They need time. They need downtime. They're exhausted by the time. So, okay, let's find somewhere where we can send them for one day a week tick in the box and literally it is a tick in the box in places where people are doing this but because that is there that we we're saying okay if, if you're if you only want your children to be for two and a half hours then we'll take them children and at least we'll try and give them something as much as we can in them two and a half hours because 
you know, this, this society become like that. We, we saw busy Shabazz, but with so many things that are going on that Deen is generally, when you talk about Deen in general, Shabazz, by it's become a hobby. It's something you do when you've got a bit of spare time. Not only acquiring knowledge, acquiring knowledge is one thing, but even going further than that, reading your namaz, reading the Quran, you know, fasting during the month of Ramadan, do, learning, you know, following these things, it's become a hobby. That, oh, you know, if I've got time, I'll read my namaz. If I've got time, it doesn't matter. If I've got time, I'll fast. If I feel okay, I'll fast. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Oh, this month I'm going to be busy. I've got the accounts to do for this business. I'm going to be really, really busy this month, so I can't fast this month. And these are the sort of things that are happening in society now that our deen has become a hobby rather than our life. And again, that is a worrying thing. You know, why we want to talk about these people of the past, Shabazz, is that I feel, I feel personally feel that a lot of our youngsters don't have these role models, don't have these people to look up to. And I want them to see that there are some role models of the past that sacrifices their time, that acquired the knowledge of the deen. Yes, we cannot be like Allah, Hazrat, like you said. We cannot be, but at least we can try and follow in his footsteps. At least we can try and do something Make some sort of change, you know, in, in society. Do something. Be part of of the solution rather than be part of the problem. There are two types of walis. There are some who we mentioned that you know they are born a wali, but a person can also become a wali. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us all awliya. You know, inshallah, this is all something which we. I think we consider them to be from another realm. When we talk about these people of the past, we think, oh. Not only from another realm, they're a different creation. You know, they're, they're not like us. But we need to remember that they were human beings. They had stomachs to feed. They had, you know, clothes that they needed on the body. They had wives, they had children. They lived a normal life, so to speak. So they were individuals. And we're coming towards the end of this program now. We've not even mentioned hardly anything about the knowledge that Allah has of that. But basically, I think even if we don't, uh, obviously, we've not even scratched the surface, I would say today. But at least I think uh, our viewers will realize the importance of knowledge and the fact that if we carry on the path that we're going on now, then knowledge is going to get less and less and it's going to get watered down even more. And less and less people are going to acquire the knowledge of the deen. And if we're on this track, then we need to think to ourselves, what's going to happen to our future? One message I'd like to give, and this message is asking questions. Asking questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. Sorry, I just want to mention there because time's very, very short. Asking questions. You know, when, when we were brought up, Shabazz, Bhai, we were scared of asking questions. We were scared of asking questions, yeah? And it was like, you know, I, I say this, I, I, although I say it in jest, but there's some reality. When we were brought up, it was do and die. Yeah, either do it or you're going to get it, yeah? And nowadays, it's how and why. Children want to know how, want to know where, want to know why. And our parents have a bigger responsibility. Now in the past, our children, you know, our children wouldn't even ask the question. Now our children are inquisitive. They've got these inquisitive minds. They want to ask the questions. But what we need to do is, is, as parents, is if we haven't got the answer, and we don't have the answers, we don't have all the answers, but go and find the answers. And we've said it many times with Shabazz, but before that, if we don't find the answers for our children and just brush them off or shout at them or kick them out of the house, then they're going to find the answer from somewhere else. And when they find the answer from somewhere else, it might not be the answer that you want to give your child. Yes, yeah, so important. And this is why it's not only for students, it's for teachers too. They should be more approachable. If, if students are to ask questions, they should, you know, happily answer. And they should also know how to answer. I'll leave you there, Khalid Bhai. Shabazz Bhai, I'm sorry. I know it's coming towards the end of the program and we could carry on for hours on this topic because we know that it is very, very important. And I hope that you can give us some more time on this program in, in other episodes but, and we can continue this discussion. But Jazakallah for your time, Shabazz Bhai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Viewers of the channel, you're watching yesterday, today and tomorrow. And we're just going to take a small break. We're just going to take this package now and then inshallah, as when we come back, we'll sum up the topic. Let's go to this small package. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. A narration in Abu Dawood narrates from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah azza wa jal sends for his ummah at the start of every 100 years a person who revives the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear viewers, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnat Mawlana Shah Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi known to be the reviver, the mujaddid of Islam. Few of his qualities that the ulama karam the, the scholars of Islam have mentioned are that he was a mujaddid, 
اي مجتهد في المسائل اي مفسر متكلم محدث اي مفتي اي محقق اي مؤرخ اي فقي اي ناقل اي ادب ان اكسبرت ان ماثماتكس ساينس لوجيك جيولوجي مورفولوجي تريجونومتري بيولوجي فيزيكس ان عالم اوف نحو اوف علم الصرف علم الادب علم التجويد فقه اصول الفقه حديث اصول الحديث مصطلح الحديث علم النجوم علم التوقيت علم الجفر منطق عن فلسفه and these were some of just of the few qualities that the scholars of islam have counted in regards to imam ahmad raza khan and his knowledge in fact the heart of imam ahmad raza khan was so rich and deep in the love of of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and in the devotion of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that he himself he says that if someone was to split my heart into two parts he will see la ilaha illallah on one part and on the, on the other part he will see muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khuda ek par ho to ek par muhammad agar qalb apna dopara karu main aur khuda ra abao ke dam hai labon par dame wapasi to nazara karu main sallu ala al habib صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سلو على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم viewers of the channel you watching yesterday today and tomorrow and i feel we've not even started on the topic but just to basically give you some sort of an idea in one paragraph if i was to give you one sentence of the knowledge that he had allah has he mentioned shabaz by mentioned that he be masterminded 21 branches but he was an expertise throughout his life he became an expert in 50 branches of knowledge and if we just look at one of his books fatawa razvi is more than 30 volumes 21656 pages within there and that's just one of his works and he did many many hundreds of books as well so today i'm hoping that we've just introduced uh, ala hazrat uh, his journey for knowledge the amount of knowledge he's had inshallah azza wa jalla in more episodes we'll talk about ala hazrat we'll talk about the knowledge that he had and his work for the deen inshallah azza wa jalla so Um, I do apologize we're towards the end of the program now I cannot give you any more time keep watching madri channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the special favor of allah holy allah the universe is the body and soul